Our next grouping of enhancements is inventory management. And there are two new features in this grouping, inventory item categorization and expiration dates. Now the inventory item categorization is available in all editions of desktop enterprise, including enterprise accountant for version year 23. I can access this by adding a new item or editing an existing item, but it's not just for inventory items, but also non-inventory, assembly, service, and other items. In my humble opinion, this feature is still in the developmental stage though. It's just starting to follow the brilliance of QuickBooks Online, which doesn't have parent items and sub items. Instead, many of you know, QBO's product service items are categorized and users can select a category when completing a transaction, but then they must choose or, an, or enter an item that resides in that category. This way they can't accidentally record a transaction to a parent item, ignoring the subs, because if they did that in, in desktop, it shows up uh, with other next to the parent item name in reports. But I don't see this happening in enterprise just yet. So let me go and show you what's going on. Let's close all this stuff. And let's go into lists and go into the item list. Now I'll make this bigger. And you can see that I've been able to, I've right clicked on the column headers and chose customize columns in order to get the category column to appear here in this position. All items that have not had a specific category assigned to them are assigned this uncategorized category. Now, if I wanna go into a sub item and categorize it, I'll show you something in the wood doors. Where are my wood doors? I'll take the exterior. Let me right click and edit it. Um, you can see the category is grayed out. It doesn't let me do anything, but if I edit the parent item, it does let me do it. But if I were to do this, it wouldn't change the category of any of the subs, which is kind of crazy. A more functional way of dealing with categories is to look at the items residing in the various categories in the new category center under lists, manage category. Now here, um, I can edit the category names either by right clicking and hitting edit category or I can double click and do the same thing or I can go down to manage categories as well. Uh, and now I can also, besides editing the category names, I can add a description. Um, and I can also create subcategories and go down three levels deep, as you've seen I've done here, under the main parent category. So if I were to create, let's say, a new category, it lets me tell it if it's a subcategory of something else. I'll get out of that. I can also delete categories. Oh, I won't let me delete that one. Yeah, it'll let me delete categories that I've created. Uh, I can also delete categories as long as they don't have any items in them or uh, any subcategories under them that have items in them. And I can also batch edit. So let's say I'm going to go into the uncategorized category and I want to move items to another category. So if I use the wood door item, I'll click next to the wood door. It automatically, now this time, it does let me go to edit its subs. And I can click on batch actions and move them to a different category. And I'm going to choose the EFK doors category. And just so you know, I'm going to cancel out of it for a sec. I can't deselect the, the sub items. So it's all or nothing here. So let's go batch actions, move, and I'll go to EFK doors, save. Okay, so it's successfully moved. And I can also uh, search for items in a particular category. So let's say I'm going to look for wood. Do I have anything in here? Search. Nothing. Try door. What the heck have I done? Uh, I'd say cabinets. There we go. Okay. So I can search for item in, in this category or any other category. All I have to do is highlight it and look for it. 
Um, okay, and I can also see the item category on the inventory valuation summary report. So let's get out of this. And let's go to reports, inventory, inventory valuation summary. I'll choose all dates. Okay, so now you can see the item categories down the side. Um, categories are also seen in other reports, either by default, like you see here, when you run the report, or they can be added as a column. And this is relatively new in R3 of Enterprise 23, uh, inventory valuation summary by site. Uh, inventory stock status by item, uh, physical inventory worksheet, and under lists, we've also got uh, the item price list and the item listing report. But one type of uh, item that I can't add to a category is a group item. I imagine this will come as well. And if I want to create a transaction such as an invoice, this isn't working for me just yet. I'm not loving this part. Let's say I'm going to invoice somebody and I want to invoice them something from the EFK doors category. It doesn't pop like it does pop up like it does in QuickBooks Online. So it's not going to let me find the items that reside in that category. So categories aren't functional in this way within transactions. I am hoping that this will come too. So next up is expiration dates, which allows me to add a field. So Esther, we're going to do a poll well, on. Please do. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to take yeah. a swig of water. Gary, uh, open the poll on uh, item categories. We're interested in knowing if you or your clients are already using this new item category feature. Uh, Intuit is really interested in finding out uh, what you think of this. Uh, they're asking people to be sure to uh, make comments in uh, within the product. And uh, we'd like to pass along how many participants here today are uh, actively using the product. So. All right, we're going to close this out in about five more seconds. So if you need the CPE, you need to participate. I need the CPE, but it's not letting me participate. We know you're here. <laughs> Thanks, Murph. <laughs> okay. I'm going to I'm going to get cracking next up is expiration dates, which allows me to add a field for expiration dates to items with serial or lot numbers activated in advanced inventory, obviously in enterprise. These expiration dates can be included on sales orders, invoices, and other customer communication forms, and also on purchase transactions, inventory adjustments and transfers, and inventory assembly bills. Expiration dates are available in all editions of QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise, Platinum and Diamond subscriptions, and Enterprise Accountant for version year 23. They help reduce business liability and risk by conveying expiration dates and customer communications, and the enterprise user can take timely actions with reports on expired or about to expire inventory by lot or serial number. I can keep inventory up to date and reduce business losses by easily replacing and replenishing expired products from inventory and by selling the about to expire items first. So to enable this feature, we saw, we're signed in as the admin user and let's go into edit preferences. And then under inventory items and inventory for company preferences, advanced inventory settings, the serial and lot number tab is now called the serial lot number and expiration tab. And here you can activate the expiration date on the right and decide what transactions will feature it. Also, you can specify if you want to be alerted if an expiration date field is empty. So I'm gonna show you where I've used it. Um, let's go into my list of items. And I created an item called widgets that expire. And let's do a quick report so you can see what I've done with it. I've created a bill uh, where we've bought 
uh, a bunch of widgets that expire. We bought six of them. And the expiration date is, hi uh, is hiding in the serial number field. And so each serial number has, a, has an expiration date. So far, so good. Now I'm going to uh, close this. Um, and now let's sell the, let's sell it on an invoice. So let's go and sell this and I'll sell it to this guy. And uh, it's the widgets that expire and I'm selling it. Come on you, there we go. And I'm selling it from the HQ site and I'm selling him three. Now I'm going to specify the serial numbers that I am choosing to sell to him. So I'm going to choose add multiple serial numbers. And the cool thing here is that if you click on the column headers, then you're sorting it by that column's parameter. So I click on the expiration date ones. I can see the ones that are expiring first on the top. And I can say, you know what? I'm going to sell him these three. He won't mind. And then I'm going to say, uh, add selected numbers. There it is. I'm selling him three of them. And then I'm going to hit save and close. And now what I can do is I can look at the expiration dates. Uh, let's take a look here uh, under reports inventory. We have something called, oh, we have something called uh, the inventory expiration status report. So we can see that what the expiration date was, what the serial number was, days until the expiration date, and, and if it's still in stock. Uh, I think there are more improvements to come since I can't add expiration status fields to other reports, such as the transaction journal report, but I think this is a great start. And there's a serious discrepancy here because uh, the expiration date, uh, you can actually sell products that have expired. Yes, you can. Uh, You're in control. It, has, it doesn't even give you a warning. Uh, That's true. You would think that there would at least be a pop-up warning that uh, one of the products has expired, and uh, it it doesn't even give you that. Uh, so I'm hoping that they at least uh, down there on the uh, preferences give you the ability to set some of those parameters of either warning or strict control and uh, preclude I think you from selling. That, that uh, would be great. I mean, under the guise of, you know, uh, best before doesn't necessarily mean worst after. I mean, you should have the ability to override it, but at least be warned that, oh, I'm gonna sell this, it's close to expiry or it expired, the customer knows I'm gonna give them a discount or something, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, moving right along, we're going to cover uh, payroll. We've, we've got to oh. do a poll there. Okay, Sorry. fantastic, go ahead, yep. Murph. We want to know if you're using this new expiration date feature, if you or your clients are already using it. I mean, this is a critical feature. It's one of the things that people have asked about and asked about. They've had to be doing this with spreadsheets custom fields. or custom yeah, fields yeah, or, yeah. you know, all kinds of things. And really uh, nothing was a good solution. And, this is better than anything we've yeah. had thus far. Yeah, but uh, I think they're going to develop it further. Businesses that really need this, uh, this is at least the right step uh, in to get it started. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and close this out. So, in my humble opinion, Intuit's commitment to desktop enterprise, a desktop and in particular enterprise, continues to grow. They wouldn't invest; they just wouldn't invest this kind of time, effort, and money. Let's face it, to enhance the features if they didn't. And as an avid user of desktop, and as an Intuit shareholder, I am very happy to hear that. You can access the QuickBooks Enterprise In-Depth Guide for 2023 at this URL. Um, I'm going to, I guess they're getting this deck, so they'll get that URL if they don't want to take a screenshot now. 
and I want to thank anybody and ask if they have any questions.